vibe coding is like all the rage now, isn't it? People are building applications in a matter of hours, but are they any good? Do they stand up? <laughs> is this real engineering or is this the next disaster waiting to happen? Let's dive in. So Vibe Coding is writing software through prompting rather than you know, using a tool to help you actually assist uh, in building the software. So it's a much higher level of software development. And because of that, the AI can get confused and can wind up making a mess <laughs> unless we know exactly what we're doing. A lot of people online who've been trying Vibe Coding have been knocking it because the end result has not really helped. It's kind of like building a shed out of duct tape and hoping for the best. Vive coding it has a lot of problems. If we don't know what we're doing, and if we don't give the AI a good model to work from, that's what I've seen a lot on YouTube is people trying it and failing miserably with it because they don't have the context that the AI needs in order to build software correctly. So for example, if we don't specify that we want to separate concerns and we try to ask it to do several different things, it will put all those things together in the same place. That may work for the moment, but it may be very, very hard to tease apart when we want to extend it in the future. So the AI doesn't think about extensibility, doesn't think about hardening, doesn't think about uh, other exceptional conditions. And so a, a lot of times security is a problem, scalability is a problem. Uh, and just being able to do something simple beyond that in the next iteration becomes a big problem. Unless we teach our AIs how to do those things. And they're capable of doing that, but we have to specify. If you want to do a simple one-off application for yourself, then Vibe Coding could be fine. But if you wanted to like release into the wild, that's where vibe coding is challenges because there's oftentimes no concern for security, no for concern for scalability. Uh, and so I, just a few weeks ago, somebody was so happy that he, he built this dream application in a matter of a couple of hours and he put it up on the internet. And like in a couple hours after that, it got completely hacked and destroyed because he didn't know that he needed security on his system. He didn't know that he needed to handle exceptions and stuff. And so those are the challenges uh, that software developers are used to facing that I think a lot of people who are not developers, you know, it doesn't occur to them right off the bat. Oh, I have to handle every exceptional condition. If there is a path that we can take through the code that is not valid, and I don't tag that, I don't handle that, <laughs> the blue screen of death. <laughs> That's what we used to call it. Now it's just your system crashes. <laughs> and that can be really big problem. So real engineering includes modeling, understanding the domain that you're working in and creating a model of that domain so that it's understandable to other people, so that, so that you can look at the classes that are in your system and see the entities that are involved and what their behaviors are. This really helps build systems that are scalable. This is a, a, the art and science of software development, right? This is what engineering in software is all about. And so we have a whole bunch of techniques around doing this, you know, and that's why vibe coding is not enough because it's a, it's a great shortcut and it's great for prototyping. But it's not real engineering, is it? So what does AI need from us in order to really do its job correctly? And the answer to that is AI needs good models to work from. It needs domain models that represent what it is we're building. And developers need to understand how to build domain models and how to express them. Developers need to understand how to associate the behaviors that they want their systems to have with the entities that they're building. And that's what object-oriented programming is about. It's about putting those behaviors in entities, not in just one big stack or one big helper method, you know, one big helper class. It's about breaking it out 
so that each entity is responsible for its own thing. Vibe coding is very much in, in a sense, hands off of the code where you tell the AI to write the code. Other tools like Copilot is in the code where you're writing the code and as you're writing it, it's making suggestions, it's thinking, anticipating the things that you need and, and actually building out the structures. There's a lot of typing involved when you're writing code. So it's really, really helpful. When you vibe code, you don't even look at the code. You basically are just talking to the computer and the computer is creating the, the stuff under the covers, basically. Good managers ask the right questions. Great managers ask AI first. The AI-driven Agile Leadership Toolkit gives you a new kind of leverage. Prompts that turn team data into decisions, retros into roadmaps, and blockers into breakthroughs. You don't need more status reports. You need better insights. So download this free guide as part of my AI for Agile Toolkit. The link is in the description. Now, what I'm curious about is for a developer who really understands how to build software, could they vibe code? Could they create a rule file and constraints in such a way that the AI would know how to build high quality code? And that's what I'm experimenting with or want to experiment with. I've only seen one other YouTuber do this. He's a senior software developer. He's a professional developer. And he has been vibe coding by creating constraint files uh, that basically tell the AI how to build things the way he wants to. And, you know, I'm seeing some interesting successes on his YouTube channel. So check it out. <laughs> and um, th I think that there are there is a lot of potential for this kind of coding if we are able to constrain our AI. So it's not just teaching the AI what good code looks like but how do we merge it through time? And I think those two skills, if we combine them, will really help us do vibe coding much better. Well, I think the resources that you need to be able to do vibe coding well as a professional engineer are how to articulate good designs, right? So understanding architecture and design, understanding the design principles, um, understanding what good code quality means and understanding how to generate that uh, in addition to, you know, just knowing about the technologies. But it turns out that understanding, you know, design patterns and, and what good design is becomes more of an issue, more in the forefront for developers because a lot of the details are being handled by the AI for us. That's what we need. We need to be able to give the AI direction by being able to talk to it at a high level, not in terms of like implementation details, but let's use a chain of responsibility here. Separate these, these two functionalities, you know, those kinds of things. And when we are able to talk and, and communicate at a higher level, that's when we'll become really productive with AI in software development. To build software with AI, you need to know what good code is. You need to understand code qualities and virtues in code. You need to understand the principles behind good software development and how to manifest that. You need to understand to how to refactor code and how to do test-first development, how to validate software automatically. These are the characteristics, these are all the skills that I focused on for the last 20 years because they're part of agile software development, the technical side, like extreme programming. And these are the skills I think that will bring us into the future. It's ironic, but it's so important. We need verifiability and behavior-driven development and test-driven development help us with that. We need to be able to start simple and emerge designs and refactoring helps us with that. All of these skills are central to being able to do AI and work with AI well. It's not about the bits and the bytes anymore. It's not about your mastery of the language or, or being able to create more complex regexes. It's all about 
being able to describe at a higher level the architectures that will last. So it's a different skill set. Where can you start to get a deeper understanding of software development? I think that understanding the virtues of software and the qualities of software that I've called out in this video playlist is the place to start. This is understandable to developers and non-developers. And when you understand what clean code means and what virtuous software is, then you know how to elicit it from the practices. Without knowing this, you know, the principles and the practices don't have a foundation. So this is the foundation to understand what good code is.